This video about peritoneal dialysis will discuss what you need to do the first time you go into the room. You'll need to set up for the dialysis as well as to drain the existing fluid that's dwelling in the patient's abdomen. We'll call this the drainage phase. Before beginning the prep for peritoneal dialysis, ensure that the patient has a Baxter clamp. If they have a Fresenius clamp, it will need to be converted over to a Baxter, and this process will be explained in a separate video. Anticipate your timing for peritoneal dialysis, and before you enter the room, you'll need to warm your dialysate. The purpose of warming the fluid is to avoid cramping and spasm of the peritoneal space that could be caused by introduction of cold fluid. You'll want to warm the fluid as close to body temperature as possible, but you'll need to be cautious not to overheat your fluid, as fluid that is too hot can cause burning and scouring of the peritoneal space. One method that is simple and easily accessible to everyone is to wrap the dialysate in a warm blanket for 15 to 20 minutes prior to performing peritoneal dialysis. Another option is to use the fluid warmer located on 4 East. It's set to 98 degrees, so you don't have to worry about overheating your fluid. So you can leave your dialysate in the warmer for an extended period of time and retrieve it prior to performing dialysis. With your fluid warmed, take your dialysate, also known as the ultra bag system, into the room. Prior to administering any dialysate, you will always need to inspect the full ultra bag system. Begin by matching the information in the order to that of the bag, starting with the solution concentration. This is a 1.5%, followed by the volume, this is 2,000 milliliters, and then ensure that the expiration date is still valid. Now you can open the ultra bag system. You'll notice that it includes more than just the bag of dialysate. There's also a drainage bag, and all of the tubing is already attached. Now we need to inspect the integrity of the system. Begin with the dialysate bag, squeeze it, and check for any leaks. Look in the tubing to make sure that no fluid has entered the tubing, and check around the outside of the bag for any leaking fluid. Now check the empty bag, which is known as the drainage bag. There should be no fluid inside of this bag. You'll also notice that there's a shiny side and a matte side of this bag. This will be important later. Return to the dialysate bag and notice the green plug at the end of the bag. This is known as a frangible. It should be in one piece. At the end of the tubing, there's another frangible. This one's blue. It should also be in one piece. And above that frangible is a yellow pull ring. If either of the frangibles are broken or the yellow pull ring is not in place, replace this bag with a new one prior to administering dialysis. Now we'll inspect the fluid. Place the bag over top of any written word. If you can read the words through the fluid, this is clear. If you can't, it's considered cloudy. If the bag is cloudy, it will need to be replaced. Next, look for any sediment floating in the bag. You should not see any. Finally, we'll need to inspect the catheter site, looking for redness, pain, swelling, cracks in the catheter tubing, or any drainage. If you notice any of these, call a nephrologist prior to performing dialysis. If everything passes inspection, it's time to begin. Place a peritoneal dialysis in progress sign on the door. Ensure everyone remaining in the room is wearing a mask. We'll be opening the peritoneal space up to air, so we need to minimize airflow as well as the potential for introduction of foreign bacteria into the peritoneal space. Put on your clean gloves. And check your patient's vitals. It's time to connect the patient to the ultra bag system. Begin by hanging the dialysate bag on an IV pole. Now take the drainage bag, and with the shiny side up, place it on the floor beside the patient. Now take one of your red ultra clamps and clamp directly beneath the dialysate bag. This is your fill line clamp. The second ultra clamp should be placed directly above the drainage bag. This is your drainage line clamp. There is a third clamp we'll use during this procedure. It's known as the patient clamp or the transfer set, and it is attached to the Tankoff catheter that comes from the patient's body. When not performing dialysis, this clamp should always be closed. To open this clamp, twist the white base counterclockwise. To close it, twist it clockwise until you feel a click. Now you need to break the blue frangible by repeatedly bending it back and forth. When it's effectively broken, there will be a gap between the tab and the base. Remove the yellow pull ring. Now take the patient's transfer set and aiming it down, remove the white mini cap. Insert the opening into the ultra bag system and twist them together tightly. You do not need to clean the transfer set with alcohol because the mini caps are impregnated with iodine that keeps the tip of the transfer set sterile. Because of this, these are one-time use caps. Dispose of the mini cap. We'll need a new mini cap every time we recover the transfer set. Now break the green frangible that is located directly beneath the dialysate bag. The completed setup will look like this. The fill clamp is located on the fill line 
which stops any fluid from draining from the dialysate bag. The drainage clamp is located on the drainage line and stops any fluid from draining down into the drainage bag. The patient's clamp connects to the ultra bag system. Each stage of peritoneal dialysis requires different clamps to be open or closed. You'll be working with three clamps, the fill line clamp, the drainage line clamp, and the patient clamp. Before you begin any stage, ensure that all three clamps are closed. During each stage of peritoneal dialysis, two clamps will be open and one will remain closed. Everything is now in place to begin the draining phase of peritoneal dialysis. Open the drainage line clamp and the patient clamp. The fill line clamp remains closed. The drainage bag will begin to fill with peritoneal fluid. This may take up to 45 minutes. You do not need to remain in the room during the drainage period. Instruct the patient to hit the call light when they're finished draining, or you can return to the room in 30 to 45 minutes to check on the progress.